redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports. Hello boys and girls and welcome to the Sports Heads, the number one show on the Tinterweb for UK fans. <laughs> I'm Simon Millen from Lindy's Sports UK. We've got another great show for you today and as we head towards week nine of the 2017 NFL season. This part of the show is the playbook and let me introduce you to the guests. We've got a great lineup today. This is a really non-offensive line. <laughs> he says. <laughs> as the, the other there, lot. Yeah. <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Oakland Raiders fullback, Cecil Martin. And on the wide outside, split on the split, split wide. Uh, split yeah, wide. Absolutely. Wesley and Wonder. Wesley Mike Carlson, Wonder. journalist, Unde broadcaster. Undefeated Lambert Cup champion. <laughs> 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 the Wesley and Wonder. I prefer yeah. that to Iron Do you Mike. realize the first show Cecil ever did in this country, I was hosting, and he was yeah. my analyst. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. NFL Europe, back in the day. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. <laughs> great days. They were great days. And great lineup. Great to have you in the show, Thanks. chaps. Um, we've all finished dressing up for Halloween. You might not know. He's notice, still gone. Is he? Oh, I'm I sorry. thought it was you. Oh, let's attend. <laughs> I've, we've finished dressing up for Halloween. I, I actually dressed up for uh, Halloween this week. Significant day Halloween this week in the NFL. Yeah. I dressed up for one thing. I was uh, dressing up as a competent general manager of the Cleveland Browns. Now, that scared the <laughs> hell out of the kids. <laughs> the kids had never seen They this. haven't had one oh, since draft, exactly, since draft the, day. Exactly. But, you know, <laughs> the women, they were swooning. I mean, it might have been something in my eye, but I saw, you know, the women were swooning because really? they thought, yeah, you're Kevin Costner. And that's what they thought. Oh, so, you, so you like, you put wood. The you, draft. You, you had, like, you, you were a tree you, around. You <laughs> <laughs> you bring the iron, I bring the wood. All right. Oh, my there God. There we go. Sports heads like, and got serious. <laughs> we have. We're going to get serious. <laughs> we have We're going to get serious. This is the playbook, as I said. A few questions for you about the, the trade this week. That was the other significant thing on oh, Halloween. Yeah. Scary trades taking place this week. Jay Ajay going to your guys, the Eagles. That's mm -hmm. a really interesting one. It's real interesting, mainly because, I mean, when you look at Jay Ajay and kind of how he's been playing this year and the controversy between him and head coach Gase, him going to the Philadelphia Eagles and matching up with LeGarrette Blunt, who's really mm -hmm. kind of resurged his career since leaving the New England Patriots. I mean, I expect Jay Ajay to kind of look at where his performance has been this year and start doing the little things to take his game to the next level because this Eagles team is hot. And if you can get a great one-two punch at running back mm -hmm. and he can get back to his normal form with obviously a much better line than what he had at the That's, Miami Dolphins, yeah. Man, it can be special. Yeah, that's the big thing. You know, he's, he's going from a line that can't block yeah. to a line that even with Jay's computers out is probably going to be able to block pretty well for what they want him to do. But then they've got LeGarren Blount as well. Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's very similar players in my book. Pretty much. I mean, you know, Blount, Blount's got a bit more shiftiness than Ajay. Ajay's got a bit more power. Mm. Um, and, you know, they don't have Darren Sproles, obviously, but they've been trying to get Wendell Smallwood to be Darren Sproles for them. Mm. They don't have to do that so much because we were talking about this before. People were saying, well, Gase was complaining that, that he couldn't use Ajay in the passing game. But, but people who watched him at Boise State mm. when he was in college, he caught the ball all the time, mm. and you know they'll get the Eagles will want to get him into that. Plus, with the Eagles playing so well offensively, if they get into a a, um, a lead, you know they love they're gonna they're just gonna Schwartz is just gonna blitz those outside guys wide nine blitzing like the mm -hmm. like the Colts used to do with Peyton Manning, mm. and that's gonna make their life easy because then you come in on offense and it's like yeah you guys run the ball and just eat some clock and then we're gonna come back and blitz the hell out of them. And you also know that Carson Wentz is gonna be super happy having two running backs that are gonna be fresh, <laughs> powerful, can pick up tough yards and can keep the secondary of any team Carson Wentz has to go against keeping them honest. Yeah. Which is going to open up some lanes for him. Yeah. And Carson's playing well right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's had his issues. He's had his moments. But at the end of the day, a guy like that who studies the way he does and gets better throughout the season like he does, man, expect this to be a powerful yeah. move for the Eagles. Yeah, which is, you know, and you ask yourself why uh, Gaze couldn't take advantage of teams that were stacking the box against a Jai, you know, mm -hmm. why they never threw deep even though they've got pretty good receivers. You I know, think that the issue with, with Ajay was the pass blocking, from my point of view, for looking at him on film. I mean, you, you, you can't pass block, yeah, and that, that, that's an issue. Yeah. But getting a fourth rounder for him, I mean... And neither does get blunt that well, no? I, I, uh, also. Could, could but a fourth, a for a fourth rounder, 
It's it, worth taking a risk, you know? Yeah. It, what if he doesn't work out big deal? Oh, it's fourth, it, what I'm saying is a fourth rounder from, from Philadelphia's yeah. point of view, great value yeah. for, for Miami's. Yeah, the thing so that much. surprised me is where were Detroit on this? If there's one team in the league that need a big, powerful running back, oh. it's the Lions. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. today's game, though, it's important to know when I played, it was important to be a good pass blocker. Mm. Great pass blocker. Remember the great mm. Emmitt Smith. Everyone talked about how great he yeah, ran the ball, but he back. passed block, he caught the ball. I think it's just as important today, but the way offenses are run today, mm. there's something called hot reads. So instead of a guy, a running back, necessarily having to block a guy, mm -hmm. well, he can just slip that guy and get out to the flat mm -hmm. or get to where he needs to, and the quarterback can dump him the ball. And now you got a running back that's in an open space to do what he needs to do. And how many mm -hmm. teams run a quarter of their offense from an empty set? Yeah, yes, yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy Garoppolo is another intriguing trade <laughs> going to uh, going from Second New England for him. Yeah, yeah, going to San Francisco. Um, what from what I gather, and I, I can talk to a few people who, who get a pretty good idea of what's going on, the Patriots really wanted to keep him. Mm. And they thought, I think, that from what I hear, that Don Yee, who's his agent and Tom Brady's agent, was trying to work out a sort of package deal whereby they would complement each other so that um, because Brady takes less money than he might get on the open market, they could give Garoppolo more and they were going to pay him a kind of, you know, 13 million, uh, was what I heard, 13, 14 million, mm -hmm. which is what a, a low level starter gets, yep. you know, a yep. um, but he wants to play. That was the bottom line. He told his agent he wants to play. And then when that became evident, the Patriots wanted to get something for him yeah. more than a compensatory pick. Yeah. So they, they were basically, you know, trying to make a deal before the, the deadline and this uh, second was the best they could get for him, which is gone, not unreasonable. To, you know, it's, it's not a bad compensation getting your boy back, Brian Hoyer. Yeah, and, and part of the deal apparently, because first thing I thought was, why did they include Hoyer in the trade? Because obviously he surplus the requirements. <laughs> but if they trade him, the Patriots are on the, on the line for his salary. So by releasing him and then his signing with the Patriots, mm. they signed him to a whole new contract, Smart. which is very team friendly. Now, there was at least one other team interested in Hoyer, mm. but apparently he wanted to go back to New England, which makes a lot of sense. Mm. You know, he's been there before. You've got a chance at Super Bowl rings. You're backing up Brady. It's yeah. a great situation. Yeah. So. I think when I think about Garoppolo, I remember first meeting him. I, I, uh, I interviewed him at the NFL Combine mm -hmm. and watching him. He's an Illinois boy. You know, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, so, you know, I got to mm -hmm. plug my man. <laughs> and he comes from a smaller school, but he has so much success in college, it, it got him to the NFL in a good round, right? Mm -hmm. To a good team. Yep. But think about how much he's gotten an opportunity to learn from Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about the times when he did get a chance to start, when Tom Brady wasn't there, between the tutelage and actually being out there and getting knocked and around yeah, and he has you know, played. feeling the speed of the game, yeah. I mean, this is going to be exciting for him for many reasons, but what's going to be really tough is that this this particular team hasn't it's, won a game yet. I mean, yeah. they're struggling. And it's a tough one because, you know, they're playing Arizona this week, which would be a, w it's a winnable game yeah. for them if they've got a quarterback. Yeah. But you can't rush, you know, you can't sign a guy on Wednesday mm. and put him in the game on Sunday. We've seen crazier things happen, haven't That's we? That's true. <laughs> in Kyle Shanahan's offense, I, I don't know. Apparently, Not Shanahan Bradford, was only interested in three quarterbacks in that draft, and Garoppolo was mm. like number two of the three mm. that he was interested mm. in. And I, I liken it. You, you made a good point about those those years behind. I liken it to Aaron Rodgers. Mm. You know, Rodgers played the sat those three four years behind Brett Favre, and then G Green Bay did almost kind of the same thing but they decided yeah. they had to get get away you know get far get rid of Favre and go with Rodgers mm -hmm. which even, was the right move and even the Philadelphia Eagles did the same thing with Donovan McNabb yeah I yeah. mean you know That's coming true. in that first draft class for Andy Reid I mean he purposely sat Donovan down for the first seven games mm -hmm. you know and allowed who's now the head coach Doug Peterson yeah you know an old journeyman you know brought him in mm -hmm. from the Packers and had him start those games yeah. and really teach Donovan about the West Coast offense yeah. so it, it is a trend you look I mean, how we evaluate quarterbacks you know and last year I was saying Jared Goff's a bust Carson Wentz is a huge disappointment you know Deshaun and and this year Jared Goff looks pretty good yep. Carson Wentz looks much much improved mm -hmm. partly because he has a line in front of him yeah. that's not injured well, and same, Dak same Prescott with, same who I like a lot you know mm -hmm. isn't like the superstar tearing the league apart anymore yeah. but he's still a you know a decent quarterback we, we we bring them up and we tear them down you it know all, way you know, too quickly it all starts on the line as well i mean this is a, a thing with russell wilson he's had a bit of a dip he's also got dwayne brown now joining 
That's a really I mean, interesting That's a great move. Now, yeah. the trade's great been both, changed both twice sides. already <laughs> because right. apparently Jeremy Lane failed his physical yeah. in Houston. So mm. they were getting Lane, yeah. you know, plus a fifth, I think it was, plus a second next year. Now they're getting um, a third and a, and a second that's without right. Lane. So uh, it's a good deal from Houston if they really believe Chris Clark can play left tackle. Yeah. But you watch out what Deshaun Watson did and you think, oh, he can run away from the rush mm -hmm. and still make plays, yeah. just like Russell Wilson does up Seattle in Seattle. And now Wilson can think, well, I don't have to run so much because I got a guy on my left side who's going to protect me. Mm -hmm. And Russell Wilson's always been smart about when he runs and when he gets out of the pocket, how he finds his guys down the field. And I think that's the difference in progression and, and tutelage and understanding of the game, of, of the quarterback position, that I think Deshaun Watson will have an opportunity to gain over time. But he's got those beautiful legs that he can use, so why not use them, yeah. right? And when I think about Russell Wilson, I mean, having that guy, knowing that my backside is protected now, you know, he's got to be happy with that decision. Mm -hmm. He's got to be happy with the fact that, you know, while he may feel like he's struggling a bit, here's, here's the deal. Quarterbacks get too much of the credit, and they get too much of the blame, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And, and he understands that, and he That's doesn't take it all too seriously. He mm -hmm. just continues to do what he does. And yeah. the good thing for him is he's got a good defense to help him that's out on great, that other yeah, side, you know? Game. And yeah, that's, you know, that's, um, and, and that's a sign of how good their defense is. They felt that Jeremy Lane is expendable. Yeah. You know, a, a guy who, they bring them along. Fifth round draft picks, seven or whatever they are, they bring them along, undrafted guys, you know, and, and pretty soon they're, they're playing like all pros. It's a fascinating division as well, isn't it? The, the, you know, with the Rams on the rise and Seattle out there, it's going to be a, a difficult, uh, absolutely difficult division to win. That now, um, mm -hmm. most surprising pick for me, most surprising trade in the week was Kelvin Benjamin going from the wide receiver at uh, Carolina, going to Buffalo. Now you've you've gone from a winnable situation to a winnable situation from his point of view, but. Carolina fans must be scratching their heads going, what on earth is going on here? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Because their pass game has been two big two receivers, big guys, two yeah. big Got wide outs bunches. plus a yeah. tight end. And, yeah. and Olsen's out, yeah. so they don't have a tight end. Now they don't have Benjamin. Now, they're saying, and the word in Carolina is he showed up overweight. You know, Maybe he'll play defensive tackle in Buffalo. I don't <laughs> know. Um, he doesn't run patterns very well. Cam and him did not look to be connecting, even last week when I was watching the game. You know, he, th th it's a little off all the time. Yeah. But it that comes with lack of reps, doesn't it? That's, probably. That's but the same thing in Atlanta with, with Matt Ryan and, and a couple yeah. of the guys. You know. they, they wanted to redo their offense, right? So they drafted Christian McCaffrey and they gra drafted Curtis Joseph. Mm. But I don't understand how, why, how and why they're using him the way they are. Mm. If they want to put in a new style offense, Curtis Joseph can be for a team the Ted Ginn, and they're missing Ted mm -hmm. Ginn simply because a, a guy like there. Benjamin's more effective if there's an overhead threat, so yeah. you can't bring your safeties up to deal with his size. Yeah. Buffalo, um, you know, it's a little bit different for them. And plus, of course, their coach comes from Carolina, so he knows mm -hmm. what he's getting. Mm -hmm. He wants a red zone target for Tyrod Taylor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that seems pretty, even, uh, pretty easy to figure out. Yeah. And, and Tyrod Taylor, um, not always the most accurate of quarterbacks. You know, Taylor, like, like Cam Newton to an extent, makes plays by keeping them alive mm. extra time, but not as accurate as Cam Newton is as a passer. You know, when I look at that trade, you know, the first thing I think is, is number one, the Buffalo Bills may be the group that's making out a little bit better, even with the issues that, that Kelvin Benjamin has at the Carolina Panthers, mm -hmm. mainly because Tyrod Taylor wants a fresh receiver. He wants a yeah. guy who, you know, wants another opportunity, yeah. right? He, he, he knows that's that. That's a great point. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's got and, something to play for right yeah, now. Yeah, and Tyrod knows what it's like to be beaten up by the fans and beaten up by coaches and beaten up by the media, you know, and he's like, you know what? I know this guy wants it as much as I want it. Yeah. Now, here's the other interesting thing is, see, there's some people, like you mentioned Christian McCaffrey and others, mm -hmm. there's probably some young guys on that Carolina Panther team that yeah, by letting know. Benjamin go, he's letting those guys know that we believe in you. Yeah. And those, that's just, it's a little big thing mm -hmm. for a young guy who's trying to make a name for himself to know, wait a minute, you just traded away this guy, which means I'm the next guy up or I'm the next guy behind that guy up. And at the end of the day, I must produce for us to get to where we want to get to. Good and point. so only time would tell, but I th think it was a good move on both sides. That's a good point. Which trade of those do you think is going to work out the best? Difficult question. I, I think the, most, the best immediate result is Dwayne Brown mm -hmm. in Seattle. He'll make the yeah. biggest immediate impact on the team. Garoppolo long term probably. Mm -hmm. If he's the guy San Francisco can depend on, you know, even if they franchise him next year and then you know, get him to a contract, 
they don't have to use one of those draft picks they've stockpiled mm -hmm. on another quarterback. Mm -hmm. So it, lets, it helps them, lets them make their team better around him. Okay. See, I'm about to say Jay Ajayi. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, you, running, you, you running back, you running back, but no, but okay, <laughs> that's our hard, UK right. born, and yeah, that's right, I said our, even though I'm from yeah, America, I'm yeah. in the UK, all right, got much love for the UK, but when you think about, again, you know, a guy who came out of nowhere and just really had a lot of success in his first year, and now going through all these issues in his, mm -hmm. in his sophomore campaign, he's going to a good team mm -hmm. with the ability to be great. He's partnering with another back that, while similar, they got enough contrast. He's got a good quarterback and a solid defense, and he's got a new life and a new chance. I think that's going to be the one be that's going to be yeah. crazy. Yeah, remember, and they'll use him in the passing game. Yeah, I hope so. Because mm -hmm. you remember la last year Makes he had, sense. what, 1,200 yards ru r rushing, yeah, something like that? How many of those are off of breaking the first Six, tackle? 600 of them were in three games. Yes, yeah, wow. true. He is a the other thirteen bust. games, I mean, you know, the, the other thirteen games were six hundred yards. But when you look at his yards after the first tackle, he breaks. Ta yeah, he breaks tackles. Talking about that yak yardage, huh? Yeah. Yards after contact. Exactly. That's what it's all about. He's a good player. <laughs> and that, if that's what they're getting. They're getting a good player. And, but uh, from Miami's point of view, yeah. I'm, the I'm problem in Miami is he's breaking the first tackle three yards behind the line. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> is it all his fault? As Gase was saying he was trying to hit a home run, but the guy hasn't scored a touchdown all year, so he hasn't done a particularly good job of trying to well, break a home run. Well, last week he had a 21-yard run on the first play of the game, and then, nothing. And then what was it, 12 for, for yeah. three yards or something Bullet like that? Bullet again by Baltimore, as yeah. Miami often yeah. are. And look, in today's game, look, those three yards, two, three, four, chipping away. I mean, look at what I mean. Look, the, the the Patriots made a made a whole a whole dynasty out of you know doing five and eight yard passes and then throwing the ball down the field. You yeah. know, I mean, look, it's it, it's a different game. The worst trade of the week that didn't happen: AJ McCarron. I'm going back to this Cleveland Browns <laughs> right. GM. Yeah. I'm going to be the GM. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kevin, Kevin Costner, Costner can do it. Kevin Costner oh, was the GM. It. That would have happened. That trade would have happened. <laughs> See, why are we calling Kevin Costner now? You know, <laughs> draft day. He was the draft he was the only yeah. GM. That's right. And I look like him, obviously. That's what. The, oh yeah, yeah, you do got a little you know, now, Kevin Costner you know, in you. I wonder what the fans think can, about that. Can, I, I think, you know, who can put a picture together, Rose Simon and there's a story. Kevin Costner? There's well, a, you know the story <laughs> behind that. My, 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 the my mother-in-law oh, okay. said, and I think she I was just trying to ship your mother She was just trying to ship <laughs> off my missus to me. I think that's what it was. And oh. she said, he looks like Kevin Costner. This is a few years ago, mind you. I've lost the hair, but so did Kev. And, uh, you know, and that was what it was. She's, she's got the best deal of that. You know, your mother-in-law was, my mother -in -law was pushing to get her, her daughter like, yeah, on you? Yeah, that's what it was. She said, I look like There her. are some crazy people. Okay. I know. I love it. Today. God bless those moms. <laughs> and, those and you know, the guy, who played, <laughs> the guy who played the father of the running back that winds up signing with the Browns. There's a spoiler if you, yeah, if you yeah. haven't watched the movie. It's a great, it's cool. That was Terry Crews. Was it? Terry Crews played in, Am in Amsterdam. Yes. <laughs> Okay, anyway, A.J. McCarron. <laughs> yeah, well, Hugh Jackson loves him, obviously, because he worked with him in Cincinnati. But the question with Hugh, and I, you know, even last sun Sunday, I was saying to O.C., I think they'll, they won't fire Hugh because they've got this three-year plan. And mm -hmm. after watching the game, and they're 0-8, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they make silly yeah. mistakes, they make, you know, you know, mental mistakes, physical mistakes, the whole works. I, I then went back and started thinking, okay, well, they had Josh McCown, they had RG3, he drafted Cody Kessler, and I said, okay, he's another Andy Dalton type, mm -hmm. he's got, Hugh thinks he can get the same kind of success that they got with Andy Dalton in yep. Cincinnati. Then they drafted Sean Kaiser, who's a completely different kind of quarterback. Yep. Well, traded, now what, what they, do you do? How, do well, you they also traded your, for Brock Osweiler and they, well. Yeah, they traded for Osweiler, obviously they didn't, didn't want to keep him, yeah. and, and, they got, and they got rid of him. But, you know, what, what are you doing? What kind of an offense are you going to run? Who's going to run it? You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't... And they picked up Kevin Hogan. Yeah, and, know, they, and then they missed on Carson Wentz. They missed yeah. on Deshaun Watson. Yeah. You know, so that's what I'm saying about GMs. Yeah. In, 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 what on earth is going on in, in Cleveland? They just don't well, see Well, you know, if I'm, if I'm their, their front office, I would probably say to whoever asked me this question five years from now, well, we didn't draft Carson Wentz because you said we didn't need Carson Wentz. You know, he was going to develop this guy, or was, we could draft this guy, or whatever. You know, and, and put the they've got so many draft picks. Accumulated. But you know, is, is it a fake? It's all very well having draft picks, but you go back to it. Does it start from the top, or in my opinion, they're getting bad information from their scouting department? And well, is who, it from the bottom? Who, who knows? I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna say. I mean, you know, we talk a lot about the GM, but the head coach is involved in there, and I wasn't even gonna bring up the scouting department. But it, it's a team. Like every part of any organization, whether it be sports or business or otherwise, it, there's a team aspect in there. And your executives are making decisions. And for some reason, there's a disconnect between mm -hmm. us as a, as a management team, you know, deciding what we want 
and and how are we going to go about getting what we want? And they're just making the wrong. That's what moves. I don't see in Cleveland. I don't see mm -hmm. an idea of what is Brown's football. Yep. What who, what do we what what kind of a game are we going to play, and who do we need to execute it? Right, if you look at the right. Patriots, for example, they know exactly what they want. You know what the They'll is. draft guys who they think fit the system who don't 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 pan out. But you see why they drafted him. Yeah. You know, you see, oh, this guy was was big and they thought he could set an edge or whatever, yeah. but it turned out he wasn't as good as they thought he was. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's you're gonna miss on draft picks. Mm -hmm. But when you draft guys for reasons you can't figure out, how does that guy fit into the team? Or or you think he fits in but then the team does something else. That's where your disconnect takes place. In, in defense of that, it's interesting because there was a time when the New England Patriots weren't that good of a team. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, you know, I mean, we could talk about the early 2000s, and, but you've got to have some of your picks and some of your free hit. agents pop, yeah. meaning like do better than what was expected, mm -hmm. do more than what was expected, mm -hmm. right? Um, at some point, you have to build a culture that at least begins to show progression. Right, but they're not even showing progression. They're showing regression. I mean, yeah. they're going backwards. That's it. Yeah. So it's, it's the good it's a thing for them is at zero and eight. There's nowhere to go back from. You can't go any further back. You can't go it's, it's, it's three <laughs> every rebuild every three years. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> talking of teams on a slump. Now there are a few of them. The yeah. Jets have lost three. Broncos have lost a couple. The Raiders have lost four out of yeah. five, which is surprising. Redskins are on a two-game losing streak. Lions have lost three, which surprises me. Bucks lost four. Um, Redskins have lost a couple. Which of these teams on a slump turns it around from here? Hmm. You know, I, I, my, the name that jumps out at me is, is Redskins, but their, their, line, their offensive line is a shambles right now because of injury, mm -hmm. and it's not going to get better you know, for, for at least a couple of weeks. You would say Oakland, on paper, you would have thought they're the mm -hmm. most talented team of, of that bunch, but you know, they just... Their defense has been terrible for reasons I, mean, I can't figure out. Denver's a team that puzzles me because they should be better. Even with Trevor Simeon at quarterback, they should be better than they are. And, and I think Osweiler's going to start for them this week. But they've had real problems along their offensive line, haven't they? They're sort of like yeah. three, three right guards uh, and a, another couple have been in and out. They're, 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 there's a rotation yeah. system. So they're playing backups along that line. Yeah. So it's not all so Trevor Simeon's fault. <laughs> so I, I mean, yeah, the I, I, yeah, I, I, I can't, you know. You done broke down. They're, 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 they're all le they're <laughs> losing for reasons. And, well, and the, you know, what's, um, what's the turnaround point? Hmm. The, the turnaround for them is who's playing an easy team this week? You know? um, well, Raiders have got Miami on yeah. Sunday night, so there's, there's one answer. But the Raiders have really intrigued me because Jack Del Rio seems to be doing what he did down in Jacksonville, and that's throwing a quarterback under a bus. Is there an issue with Reggie and, and Jack Del Rio in your I opinion? don't know if there's an issue um, between them, but Jack Del Rio is hes a good coach in the sense of motivation. He's the kind of guy you bring in when you've got a, a veteran kind of team and you want to turn them around a bit. He's not a great coach once you get to that point, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes mm -hmm. about game, ma game management, game calling, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And I think that's part of what we're seeing. Although the guy who'd be in the hot seat, I think, is Ken Norton. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the it defensive but, then, but then having said that, I mean, Jack Del Rio is a defensive coach. Yeah. He doesn't get involved in the offense, so uh, yeah. that, that, that intrigues me, no end, why, why he wouldn't sort of uh, have a bit more hands on there. Um, Colts as well. Andrew Luck seems to be out. That doesn't seem to be getting. I don't see any reason to bring around. him back if he's not a, you know yeah. if he's not completely 100 percent. You're throwing him into mm -hmm. a bad situation. The one for me that's uh, going to perhaps turn it around is uh, Detroit Lions. Uh, they're three and four at the moment. Um, yeah. They've they if they can win their next three, they've got Green Bay away, which. Yeah. This, that's an in, it's an intriguing game because Green Bay's been off on a bye week, so they've had yeah. time to, you know, you heard Mark, Mike Huntley. McCarthy talking about Brent Huntley. We've yeah. had him for three years, trained him. Well, now he's had him for, yeah, now he's had him for ten there. days, and he can work on him intensely. But, but. Yeah, they, they've also got Cleveland at home the following week, and then Chicago away. Now that's Those a, are that's three a pivotal game. Games for them. They are. I mean, then they've got Minnesota at home, which yeah, maybe they'd lose that. But looking at their schedule, you can see them winning at least six of the last well, nine games. If you look at the Pittsburgh game. They tore the Steelers up yeah. until they got in the red zone every single yeah. time, you yeah. know, and they just can't, they have no, like I said, they have no running back. You know, yeah. Jay Ajayi to Detroit would have made a lot more sense to Philadelphia. What's Ebron doing? Where's yeah. Ebron? You know, he's the, he's the guy. He the was on the guy. trade block. He was one of the it's names crazy, that they were talking about during the week. Crazy. Talking of which, we're Steelers. We're going to have, because obviously the, the Lions played the Steelers. 
Uh, wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster answered Martavis Bryant. 193 yards receiving, a 97-yard touchdown, which effectively won the game. They won 2015. Um, where does Martavis Bryant go from here? Yeah, I'm surprised he wasn't traded. You know, but they don't but, trade the Steelers. But, yeah, it's part of it, and part of it is that after the last two weeks, it's not the best time to trade the guy. It's hard to trade the guy when you when you've made him inactive. <laughs> you know, you when he's when he's behind Roger, Eli Rogers, who cannot mm. catch a ball. Mm. Um, I mean, the backstory. Obviously, the backstory. He was uh, suspended for yeah. guys that don't know. He was been suspended all of last year. This is his second drug suspension. The Steelers have stuck by him, and then. He goes out to criticize Juju yeah. on, on social media. Um, he demands a trade, says he's not getting enough of game yeah. time. I mean, it's not going to put grow you up. in. It's, grow it's, up, it's guy. The guy's out playing. You, know, you want to play? Play better than he does. Yeah. You know? exactly. I love Juju, though. They had, the first question they asked him was, you know, how those three guys couldn't catch you, you know, up the middle of the field. And he said, you know, my Madden's only 82 or 83. I, I want my Madden speed to be over 90. You and he's, know? you know, he's, he's got, you know, he's three weeks shy of his 21st birthday. He's a young, young yeah. talent. So they've got a good number one, Antonio a Brown. Number one. Yeah. They've got a, a, an effective number two now in Juju. Can Martavis be that effective well, number three? Know, because they haven't got a number three they, in effect, have he's they? Not, no, because both Sammy Coates and Eli Rogers they have both, hands issues. They both dropped. Both yeah, dropped if you well, think back to Rogers. the playoffs last year against New England, that was a game where the Steelers were mm. actually in that game if yeah. they hang on to two long passes that they, that they don't catch. Yeah. Um, so so the, the big thing about the Steelers is they're sort of 30th in uh, red zone efficiency. It's surprising. Actually. Well, that's, that was them in the Detroit game. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, the 97-yard touchdown was the game. Yeah. That, that really, that really uh, determined it. Mm. So if you want to, I mean, you, you mentioned something earlier, and you said, where does Mark Tavis go from here? Yeah. Where he goes from here, if he's smart, is that I close my mouth, and I realize that we've got so much talent on this mm -hmm. offense, and now we got this young man, Juju, stepping up. Yeah. I get to get me a ring. Yeah. You know, and if I can get me a ring, then that ups my value. Yeah. But if you get traded to some other team, you, you don't have as great a chance to get a ring. And if you are as good as you say you are, mm. and, and he is a good player, oh, no and doubt. you got, yeah, you got of, Antonio Brown and Juju, mm. now, now that's mm -hmm. opening up more lanes for you. If well, you can get out of you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, gonna you're gonna see a lot of single coverage. You're yeah. gonna see yeah. and feel and experience 10 times yeah. more than you would by getting traded. How does he and gain that trust though from Because obviously that trust is broken down between Tomlin, or, uh, uh, Mike Tomlin, but has he just stuck a, a bit of a rocket up his backside? Well, is that you, what you he's done by he putting on the trust? practice squad? Well, he, he go, you go out and play. See, see, playing well yeah. speaks louder than any words. Mm. You know, and that's why the strength and weakness of using words in social media to address how you feel, well, show me how you are. So show me what kind of a football yeah. player you are. Mm -hmm. Show me what kind of a teammate you are and leader you are. Yeah. Because those are the things that ultimately yeah. create the kind of player that you're going to be. I mean, look at the way Antonio Brown came out of nowhere, played so well, but he also mm -hmm. embraced the importance of being a leader. Mm -hmm. And I think where Martavis goes is that realization. And guys like Antonio Brown pulling him aside and saying, hey, we can get a ring. Mm -hmm. We can get a ring. What's most important to you? Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then at that point, Martavis has to make a decision. Yeah. Right, because we could try to motivate, and we can try to talk, and we could try to we could try to mold as much as we want to. But a young person has to make that decision for themselves. And where does he go from here? If he makes that decision, oh, the Steelers gonna be a bad, yeah. bad boy yeah. because that running back is playing well right now. Oh yeah. God, yeah, Le'Veon. Le'Veon yeah. is yeah. Well, so you know, smooth. He's a fullback, right? Mm. Yeah. Wide receivers, prima donnas. You know, cornerbacks, prima donna. These are the guys Full who backs, do the hard work. Fullbacks, team, team guys. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's what all, we do. You know, yes. I mean, we fully got your back. But, but that's, <laughs> all, that's <laughs> also the NFL. You know, we, you're going to get money in the bank. Yeah. You know, no it's matter who you play for or, you know, even sometimes whether you don't play well or not. You it know, intrigues you. But you're not going to get a ring. Exactly. That's hard. The one, just going slightly off tangent, as I always do, um, fullbacks. We've got the sexiest fullback ever to play the game in the studio here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But the position, <laughs> but the down, position, yeah, the down. position, you know, my man crush. The position itself of fullback, it's not sexy in the NFL anymore. Why yeah. is that? Um, they're using the tight end a lot more, you know. They're using the tight ends to go more vertical, you know. And I guess the feeling was because tight ends are typically taller, bigger, that 
you know, it's a it's a route that more fits today's game of passing, 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 mm -hmm. versus running the ball down someone's throat and tackle to tackle and letting that that fullback, you know, block those linebackers, safeties, DNs, and, and but otherwise. But you see a lot of teams that in short yardage situations, put, you know, they don't have that. They'll put that a lineman in if they need no, something like that. You know, and you look at guys like Lorenzo um, Neal. Yeah. You oh, know, one of the best. Oh, one of the best. But Lorenzo, Rackman, Lorenzo, back in the day. Oh. Lorenzo Neal looked like a, a guard wearing a low number. Moose. You know? Remember Moose? Yeah, Moose Johnson. Well, now you're talking about guys Dallas who, Cowboys. who, yeah. who <laughs> were West Coast receivers. You mm -hmm. know, they were really good coming out of the backfield, going into the flat and catching yeah. the ball, could run occasionally. Van Egan at the Raiders, you know, guys like guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, Cecil was in that, that kind of group. Yeah. You know, he was a good West, West Coast yeah. fullback. But if you're just going to use your fullback six, eight plays a game as a lead blocker, you, you're, you want someone who's, who's bigger, you know, look, looks like a lineman more or less. And you can get that with an end. Yeah. I want to throw some out because you, you, mm. you, you mentioned something earlier and it, it, it sparked a thought, mm. especially with the, with the Steelers. You know, when you look at the Patriots and the dynasty they created, mm. you know, there is so much teamwork to the point where people take pay cuts in order to yeah. be on the team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you wonder why the Patriots are so great continuously. Mm. And you look at a team like the Steelers who have all the potential in the world and have been above average, mm -hmm. good to great, for a while now. They're a classy yeah. while they haven't Ever matched the number of rings, right? Yeah. So once Martavis and guys like that make that decision and say, wait a minute, what is the formula, yeah. right? You don't have to know yeah. the inside culture of the Patriots to know that they got a lot of rings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, and and right. part of that mm -hmm. is, is you know, how you conduct yourself as a teammate and what you're willing to do yeah. for the sake of a championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Classy organization. And the they Steelers got a full, have been since ever since Their roster with a fullback, Patriots. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. I, I like how you brought that back together <laughs> like that. <laughs> My man, Mike. <laughs> London games. I'm not chats. just a pretty face. <laughs> London games. We saw we saw you reading your Lindy's. Uh, the, 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 uh, I'm going to get that. Lindy's. It's, 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 it's like a good luck. It's like a good luck to me. Ooh, I know. <laughs> Lindy's there. Yeah. <laughs> I think by putting putting Tom Brady on the front, it could be a curse, but it doesn't seem to be yet. It's not no, working. No, yet. It's not really. We saw we saw that in the BBC. Thanks for that, Mike. It's great, great, great. It wasn't comments. deliberate. But no, I know. But I do you carry it around with me. So yeah. That's funny. Um, it's inevitable. <laughs> the London Games. You saw you on the BBC London Games. Uh, what have we made of the London Games? What have we learned from? Well, them? you know, I hear an awful lot of people criticizing because the games weren't great this year. A couple of them were well, three of them were one-sided. Mm. Two of them were really one-sided because the Ravens and the the Dolphins came yeah. out and just couldn't play. They yeah. were flat, completely flat. But I, I just say to them, well, how do you guarantee you're going to have good games? You know, how do you schedule, get, schedule them in December the previous year mm -hmm. and know that the teams will be competitive? You, you can bring in good teams, but you don't know they're going to be that good the next year. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can be, you can have not so good teams, they'll be better. It's weird that in 11 years, there has never been a game in the London series between two teams with winning records. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you would just think the law, of, you know, we've come close a bunch of times. I think it's because it's early in the season as it's well. It's early you know, in the you, season, A couple yeah. of wins, a couple of losses, and that's it. It's a lopsided. Yeah, but this, this year was, was an anomaly. You know, you're never going to get big games in the sense of the kind that they want to put on prime time sure. automatically. Your, yep. your Denver, New England's, and your, you know, your Dallas, yeah. Washington's, Green that Bays. kind of thing. Yeah. Divisional games are not going to come to London because mm. I think they're too important to teams. They some want some are, that to be, no, especially not the big games, but certainly, you know, yeah. we've, we've had a couple that have, that have been quite interesting. You know, in general, yeah. um, exactly. you know, if Green Bay come to London, they're not going to play Chicago, or well, actually nowadays they might well, but, <laughs> but you know, but, but, but within those limitations, it's really random. Yep. You know, you, you know, you, you should be able to even have two teams that don't look so great and produce a mm. good game. Well, and the game last su last Sunday was not a bad game. Mm. Um, it was an interesting one. It what was about a close one. Mm. What about the venues themselves? I mean, Twickenham, we have Wembley is obviously, from my point of view, Wembley is the ultimate place. It's uh, it, uh, fan friendly, easy to get to. Twickenham, I haven't been to any of the Twickenham games, so I can't. It's not easy, uh, not as easy to get to. Put it that can you way. imagine what it's going to be like going to Tottenham when these games are? And I think it's an absolute no-no. I think it's going to be a shambles. I really do. They haven't got the infrastructure there, and it's a nightmare to get to. Well, I'm I don't really know worried. the new, you know, I don't know if the new stadium, I mean, they're already saying it won't be 100% ready for the yeah. first season. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree with you about Wembley, part, part also because it has the cash Watch. of being Wembley, whereas a f any team's football stadium mm. is associated with that team. Mm. And it's such a tribal society here when you're talking about yeah. football fans. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, I remember when the Monarchs played at 
at, at White Hart, the old White Hart Lane. Mm. You know, and there were people who were monarchs and said, I won't go to that place. Mm. It's yeah. tough to get to. Yeah. It really is tough to get The other thing is uh, the Wi-Fi <laughs> system at uh, Twickenham is not as good as it is at Wembley, apparently. Wembley's very, very good now. Never used to be, but it's really, really? up to scale. So it's, it's yeah. interesting. You know, I was uh, not. Uh, yeah, but it's not normally a, it's just at the stadiums, you, w you always have trouble because there's 80,000 people trying to get on Wi-Fi at the same time. Mm. I do think, I mean, the obvious question for, for newbies out there, and uh, I haven't, I've got your views on it, Cecil, is do you think London can sustain a franchise? No, definitely. Definitely can sustain a franchise. And, what I, and, and as I get into that, I do want to touch on the fact that, you know, it is... There's got to be some data analytics on how a Miami Dolphins team go, does when they go to Seattle, you know, or San Francisco 49er team, right, going, mm -hmm. you know, That's all the way yeah. across, you know, Washington, yeah. D.C. So uh, every coach approaches traveling a little bit differently. And when you look at how these lopsided games are going on, well, some of these coaches do things that they're not sharing with other people right. because these are our advantages. These are our, our ideas on how we're going to approach a London game mm -hmm. so that we have the best advantage to win. And so maybe that's the reason why it's so lopsided mm -hmm. because teams are still trying to figure out what's the right that's formula. The and the ones that win, that's they figure something out, right? And they're doing something in a certain way. So right. on that, you know, I, I, I say, look, there will definitely be a franchise here. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about UK fans, and let me just say European, mm -hmm. American football, NFL fans, and, and, and let me even say just NFL, not even NFL, but American football players, coaches, refs, I mean, people who love the game, they're going to go to whatever stadium the game is happening at. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's at Tottenham yeah. or Twiggenham yeah, yeah. or Wembley or... Yeah. Shoo, you it's know, gonna they're going to they're gonna show up. You know yeah. why? Because they love the game. Yeah. And that's what makes the NFL what it is because it's a great game, mm -hmm. you know. But also, it, yeah. it's a great entertainment, you know, type of a thing that, that is Yeah, you want to have the facilities to get. Because what, what the league is most interested in is, is getting the new people in, the, the people who aren't committed NFL yeah. fans, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. families, uh, women, children, you know, the, mm -hmm. and get them in, get them early and show them a good time. Yeah, that's great. But Thanks do know the most. Do know, and and I'm very passionate about this because I've spent so much time all over the UK and parts of Europe. There is so many guys and gals out there playing the game, mm -hmm. whether it be tackle or flag. You know, there's so many. Like I mean, getting into refing and coaching and mm -hmm. and even whatever it takes to help a club become better and get more players. And so. You know, I think that gets lost in the shuffle and, and the mindset, right? Because we're always talking about the NFL, which yeah. is great. But let's not forget it's about the grassroots, the grassroots yeah. players out there that are also yeah. making the yeah. NFL so popular because exactly. they're playing the game and engaging the game. Mm. Mike, same question to you. Can it sustain a franchise? They're looking at 2020. I, I, I really doubt that it'll happen by 2020. Um, and then it. things may change. You know, I, I think there's... Mm, bigger changes than than just in football coming um, economically, say, right. worldwide. Uh, any problems that are on the practical, logistical level, the mm. NFL can get, get by, can get through, especially because the governments, situations governments here want to help yes. them out. Yep. Tax situations are a problem. Yeah, the, the more pressing problem is is what you do with the players, how you work it when they come over to this country, whether you can get rid of, of any inbuilt home field advantage, you know, which is yep. why they're playing more games at different times to try to find out what works and, right. and what doesn't work. Um, but the, I think the biggest problem is you have a fan base here who are already committed to NFL teams, not to a NFL team, mm -hmm. whether it be the Jags coming over as, yep. you know, as the London franchise or a new franchise in London. And whether you can get them to at least change accept the team as a second team, if yeah. not change allegiances. Change of allegiance is hard in this oh, country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 once you get what you grow up with, you're you're, you're stuck with it. You know, and, um, but that's going to be hard because they they need they will need to sell out eight games. You know, mm -hmm. and that means buying season tickets, that kind of stuff. Right now, they do four games, and if you're a 49ers fan and the 49ers aren't coming over, well, you know, you still got a chance to see an NFL game between two teams that. You know, maybe you hate one of them, mm. and so you'll go to root for mm -hmm. the other team, where it's two teams you don't really care about, but it's great because you get to see an NFL game in the backyard. So that's a perfect situation for the more neutral audience out there. So that's the biggest hurdle for, for the NFL. Well, we can but hope, gentlemen, we get an NFL franchise over in the UK at some point. Mike Carlson, thanks very much. Brilliant to have you in, as always. Cecil Martin, the thank one you, and only. You.
the greatest fallback Philadelphia ever had between 1999 and 2002. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, they traded, they traded true. was it John Runyon? Uh, who'd like they, no, who'd like they trade for you? Who'd, who you they were, trade you for were. you? I don't know. Let's not go back to it the was past. Fullback. We're in the it present was, right who now. Was it? it was fullback I'm for fullback. I'm a fullback for this team right <laughs> here, and that's the team <laughs> I want to open up holes and block for. That's why you're in the center. Bam. Yeah, that's he used to be fullback. Now he's laid back. That's been the playbook. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Mike Carlson, Cecil Martin, Kevin Costa, Simon Millen. We'll speak to you soon. Redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports.